understanding chemical changes so in chemical changes there is a change in the chemical property so burning of paper burning of wood burning of candle burning of paper all of those are good examples of changes in the chemical composition so there can be production of heat there can be production of light or any other radiation ultraviolet radiation or even sound all of those would be an example of chemical change so very good example is to start with fireworks now this fireworks have great sounds and this is an example of a chemical change so sound is produced here the next is an example of photosynthesis photosynthesis the process of digestion the process of respiration or when i am cooking food mixing various ingredients so the chemical composition changes new substances form and this is an example of a chemical change so there can be formation of heat formation of light or formation of gas in a case of a chemical changes also a very good example is a battery or burning so what i do again is i have certain simple demonstrations i take a paper i tear this paper this is a physical change not a chemical change now what what i do is i simply light the candle now when i am lighting this candle just a second so what i do is i light this candle and lighting lightning of this candle itself has both kind of changes so it is a physical change as well as a chemical change how the physical change here would be melting of the wax as we know and we have discussed in the physical change however this burning is a instance where chemical changes takes place and therefore is an example of chemical change now i take this paper i take this tong i hold this paper and i start to burn so when i burn this paper this is an example of a chemical change another good example we take is this is a manganese magnesium ribbon i take a little section of this ribbon easy to break note it is very dangerous so don't observe this directly when you are in laboratory with your eyes so just take a note if you have this practical going on somewhere near to you don't observe the flames directly it has a white flame and when you burn this magnesium ribbon what would happen this magnesium would turn into a powdery substance which is white in color now this is how magnesium oxide is formed you can visualize it through the video but not directly so that is a instruction specifically given for you now when you are burning this magnesium oxide is produced and this magnesium oxide which is white in color would then be taken into a solution of phenolphthalein what is phenolphthalein phenolphthalein is a uh, bottle that you can see here so this is what phenolphthalein is it is an indicator for understanding the presence of acid or base now this magnesium is basic in nature so what i do is if i pour this magnesium into this phenolphthalein solution uh, it required more heat before it could turn white anyways but when we turn it put it into the phenolphthalein it would start to turn pink as you can see here so there is a change in the color for this rod if you can visualize from below this changes into pink and this indicates this is a base so phenolphthalein uh, is a indicator which turns pink on basic solution however it remains colorless for acidic solution so since magnesium hydroxide is a weak base it would reflect pink color we would understand this in a while again so that is a basic experiment to understand the presence of chemical changes so as we said here the experiment runs so we have magnesium when this magnesium combines with oxygen of the air it forms magnesium oxide and as we said don't visualize it directly it burns with a brilliant white light and 
therefore it forms the magnesium oxide which is a chemical change now this magnesium oxide when i react this with water it forms magnesium hydroxide magnesium hydroxide is a basic solution and this would turn pink in presence of phenolphthalein phenolphthalein is a indicator for acid base again i repeat it would turn pink for base but phenolphthalein would remain colorless solution for the acids okay so this is how we understand the solution and now we have a beautiful color if you can visualize uh, let me zoom it again so probably you can have a closer look now how the solution turns pink uh uh let me pull it out and you can see this turning into a pink solution probably it's not visible as a pink now i put a hand here and you can see a little pinkish shade i'll show you after a little while again how this changes into a pink color okay let me leave it for another few minutes and we would see it again okay the so this is how we have the magnesium hydroxide formation and reaction with phenolphthalein the next is rusting of iron so rusting of iron uh, we have iron and this in presence of water or oxygen would form uh, iron oxide and this iron oxide is the rusting that you can see here so this is a important example to understand a chemical change how can we avoid this rusting there are various ways galvanization is one of the way cathodic uh, protections are another way and stainless steel of course which we use for our cooking purpose now galvanization is where we are treating a layer of zinc on iron and the zinc on iron protects the rusting then we have the cathodic protection cathodic protection what happens we connect an external anode to the metal and this external anode to the metal would have the uh, current flow and this would finally create a layer which would avoid rusting similarly stainless steel we have iron mixed with chromium nickel manganese and all these help to reinforce it and prevent it from rusting but we have a classic example of kutub minar kutub minar in delhi has an iron pillar now this iron pillar is more than 7 meters high it has a weight of more than 6000 kilograms and it has not rusted for a very very long period of time and therefore has created a enthusiasm among the scholars to understand how this iron was created so that it has not rusted till date so rusting of iron a very clear example of chemical change let's go back to that magnesium hydroxide and now i won't disturb this and just pull it closer to the camera so probably you can see the pink color visualization better now and this is how we understand that magnesium oxide when combines with water forms a magnesium hydroxide and this when we have few drops of few uh, uh, kind of pieces of phenolphthalein that we add it changes into a brilliant pink color indicating that it is a base so acid base we would understand further later in our separate lecture coming on back to another examples of rusting so another example is copper copper solution now copper solution and uh, we have iron a very good example so we have certain copper solution here and i put this copper solution into this flask so i had kept it a little while ago and i was waiting for this iron nail to rust or to turn brown but uh, it has not happened as of now but this solution 
would basically turn greenish and this iron nail would turn brown. So this is how the copper sulfate reacts. Now to put it in a simple equation what we have is iron which is the form of nail that we introduced here would react with this copper sulfate solution and then we would have formation of copper and iron sulfate. This iron sulfate, this water would turn from pink to little greenish, greenish over time and this is how we have the iron sulfate which turns greenish in color. However, on the other hand, we have copper that turns what this copper would turn brown in color okay so copper turning brown and iron sulfate turning green so another good example of a chemical change now coming on to another simple example this is vinegar and baking soda i didn't have the vinegar to have this live experiment here but yes the idea is we combine vinegar and baking soda now when these are combined what would happen carbon dioxide would be released now what is baking soda just for your knowledge it is sodium hydrogen carbonate so sodium hydrogen carbonate which is baking soda combines with vinegar which is acetic acid and this acetic acid and baking soda would release carbon dioxide and other substance let's leave the other substance focus on carbon dioxide for now so what I do is I obtain this carbon dioxide and put it in the lime water. Now as soon as lime water has this carbon dioxide this lime water would turn milky and this is due to a very simple reaction what is that carbon dioxide combines with lime water CaOH whole twice which gives you CaCO3 which is calcium carbonate and water. And this calcium carbonate is responsible for turning the solution milky in color. So when this carbon dioxide passes through the lime water, the lime water turns milky due to formation of calcium carbonate. And this is a standard test also for understanding the presence of carbon dioxide that lime water turns milky and also an example of a chemical change. So that was a very basic example to understand the chemical change.